Okay, on this episode of Monster Lab, we're gonna show you how to make a plaster mold of this creature. Now, this is something we sculpted in the last episode, and it's all sculpted in wet clay, and it's for a full body zombie, but now we've gotta make the mold, and I've put this on the stand. I'm gonna take it off the stand and lay it flat so that I can work and, and, and have gravity be my friend. So I've just put this on with, with screws in the front and this will allow me to get it off quickly. All right. So what you'll need for this is uh, Krylon spray. You want to spray it with Krylon. Now Krylon um, uh, Leather Brown is works really well for us and it's gloss. Krylon Leather Brown Gloss. And I put several coats on this and the important thing is, is you let it dry thoroughly. Uh, it probably should just wait till overnight. If you don't, if you go too fast in the molding, the paint will actually stick to the plaster and then the latex will not absorb there. So it's really important that you, it, it, now what I did is I painted it several layers, then I put a fan on it for like four hours. And so it should be dry enough to not stick. But if you can leave it overnight, just leave it overnight and come back to it. It won't dry, you don't have to bag it now. Once you put this paint on, it's a good seal. So I'm gonna, uh, mix the plaster. All you need for this is really uh, one or two chip brushes. These are throwaway chip brushes you can get at a paint store and uh, that just helps it get in the cracks and you'll notice that I'll, I'll stroke both directions as I work to make sure that there's no air bubbles and so now we're going to mix the plaster. So the plaster we use at Distortions is USG number one pottery plaster. Now there's lots of different options. Um, we found that for bang for the buck and, and ease of using, how it thickens up as you work, we like this. So um, I would recommend using that. And then you, if you want to get into UltraCal 30 and different things, there's different plasters have different uh, uh, strengths and weaknesses. This works for us. We've been using it for 40 years. Okay, so basically what you're going to do is get water in a bucket. Now, I've kind of put in about four inches, I suppose, into this. And I'm looking at that and I'm saying, would that cover the, the mask with a, a thickness of an inch and a half, two inches? And so that's what I'm guesstimating I need. And then I'm just going to start putting plaster and sifting it through my fingers uh, as I fill this up and, and, and your mass will go up some but not tons. It's not like you say, well, I'm going to put all this plaster in and I'll have twice as much. It doesn't quite work that way. Most of the water is absorbed into the plaster. So let's get started. Now the technique that I was shown by USG uh, was you just kind of sift it through your fingers. Now you can weigh this according to specs and that's fine um, and and probably better but um, you, you've got to have scales and things and and make sure you've got your proportions right for whatever size mold you are it's just a little more complicated and this really works well um, to get a good thickness of plaster and it can vary it's not like it's magic uh, the 70 30 ratio is magic um, uh, I'll actually, uh, if I'm doing a mold where I've had to do multiple layers, I'll actually go way off ra ratio and make it real thick for a, a, a final layer or something because you're basically just building strength at that point. But staying close to their formula is going to be best because it'll give you um, uh, the best mold that will absorb the latex uh, if it's if it's mixed properly. And what I'm doing is I'm just getting the, the plaster in there, I'm shifting it, going across the top surface of the water, and, and I've got to get quite a bit of uh, plaster in here 
to um, soak up this water. And ultimately, toward the end, when you know you've put enough in, is it will start to form islands over the surface of the water. And you can kind of slow down and wait for it to sink and things. Um, of course, the plaster I'm putting in now is slowly absorbing water. And if you're shifting, uh, sifting it through your fingers like this, it'll help it from being clumpy. Because a clump, if you have bunches of clumps in there, um, you, 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 you may be making it too thick because the water can't get to it. And, and uh, so uh, then when you mix it, you got all this dry plaster that, that uh, wasn't reacting to the, the water. You know, I'm going to have to eat my words a little here. Um, the plaster is adding volume. I'm probably going to end up with more plaster than I, I really needed. I'm probably, I'm probably up to six inches now. So I've added a couple inches and I'm not anywhere near saturation yet. But it's better to mix too much than not enough. So I'm just sifting it through my fingers and it's, it's starting to um, hit that saturation level because it's slowing down now. It's not dropping so quickly. But you don't have to worry too much. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dawdle, but you don't have to worry too much because as long as you're not agitating it, it, it's not going to set up real fast. Part of the, the set is due to you um, uh, mixing it up. And so you can do this. I would just stay at it pretty steady. Now we're really starting to, to hit that point. So I'm going to slow down a little and make sure that those islands are, they're still dropping. but we're getting close. And make sure you get around the edges and the middle. Don't, don't be in just one spot because it, you really need to uh, make sure that it's, because it's slowly just going down to the bottom of the bucket and absorbing and, and filling as we go. So I'm going to wait here a second. I like to kind of see it have islands over the whole surface. I think that gives you maybe a little bit thicker mix, but on something like this, um, that's, that's okay because it's not going to take a long time to make the mold. All right, so I'm probably good here. So that's what you're looking for. You want to see that kind of a uh, uh, islands. It's like a little map of uh, some Arctic wor world you made for yourself. But that's what you want to see before you start mixing it. And so when I mix it, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to squeeze and break up any clumps that are in there. Now you can wear gloves, but if you wear gloves, you need some pretty long ones. Um, but I don't mind. I just, I just wash my hands afterwards and it's fine. But um, uh, a lot of people like to wear, wear gloves. But anyway, so I'm circling and, and just... Whoosh, whoosh. A lot of these details, they're, they're small, but they can make a difference. Another thing I'm not sure that I mentioned is the water should be tempered. It shouldn't be real hot or super cold. You should, like in the winter, you may have to add a little, um, a little warm water, but it shouldn't be warm at all. It should be a little cool to the touch, which is pretty much like room temperature. Now, because I put this in carefully, I'm not feeling any lumps. So, this is a good, good batch. And I'm still 
um, squeezing just in case, but I'm not feeling lumps. So, so now this is ready to put on the mask. Now one thing you want to do is have a bucket of water because when you clean your hands, you do not want to be cleaning them in the sink. And it's like serious rotor rooter time. Okay, so I am gonna like paint east and west, north and south to try to make sure and then try to get up under this ledge. You know how I had this ledge built so it rolls into your eye socket instead of just cut latex. And there'll come a point, you'll get this on and, and there'll come a point when you're not doing any good. You know, the, it's not setting up fast enough. The set time is very good on this stuff. But, you know, when you're doing something small, you'll have extra time. When you're doing something big, you gotta rock and roll. So it's kind of splits the difference and works well. And it's critically important that you, you uh, go back, back and revisit areas where there's, you know, pores and things that might, the plaster may not get in or wrinkles or deep spots. You gotta really poke and stuff. Um, but you don't wanna, you don't wanna go crazy and like get the, um, hit it with the hard part of the brush. You know, you make sure it's just the bristles. Another thing you can do is get a, a handful and kind of pour it on at times. Um, and you also wanna get some on the board. I mean, you're, you're, the goal is to get a, an inch to two inch fairly even mold you'll never get it perfect but as close as you can so now i've got a good amount of plaster over the whole thing i'm going to come back and do that again i'm going to going to try to just double check and make sure that i haven't missed anything Even though I'm plowing off the, the plaster, it's worth it. So all those strokes were that way. And then I'm going to go the opposite. And that's pretty sure that you've got Got everything. And, and when you're doing a half mask, it's just everything's a little easier because gravity is your friend. Now, if, if you're doing a full head mask, then you can get on those early coats, but then you're going to have to wait until, um, until the stuff gets thick to do a lot of, of the buildup because gravity is going to keep sending it to the table. So now we wait. We wait for it to thick, thicken up a little bit and, um, and then we'll, um, we'll put on some more. We'll just keep going. We'll just wait for the chemical reaction. So it's been maybe five, 10 minutes and the plaster's starting to get a little thicker. So I'm gonna put a little more on. Now, one thing that's helpful is to get a little cup or something like that. And then you can scoop some out and then just kind of aim it. You don't wanna disrupt what you've got going down there uh, under the under this new plaster because that's all starting to crystallize and things a little bit's okay if you're brushing it like you've got some details it's not terrible but it's better to just let it let it sit and add and once you've got it kind of smoothed out like this um, it, you don't have to worry about the air bubbles too much they'll unless there's a, a cliff or something that there's air can get trapped under it uh, it'll be fine so we'll let that get a little firmer but you know we've been doing this for 40 years if you can believe that 40 years and so you know we've got our way of doing things but I can tell you that other people do things different and there's lots of different ways to skin a cat and um, that's probably not politically correct to say that, is it? Anyway, 
Um, this is the way we do it, but you might watch some other people, they do it a little different. You might like their way better than our way. This just works, you know, it just, it works for us. And you'll find with a lot of these uh, uh, special effects guys, makeup guys, whatever, that once they get something that works, they don't like to mess around. It's like, I'm sticking with that because I've had too many failures. So um, we've kind of found a way of doing it that works well and you know, when you're making thousands and thousands of pieces, it's nice to, to not be reinventing the wheel every time and <laughs> start a new product. And sometimes, sometimes Marcia said, well, we ought to try this new media, material and we should do it. And I'm like, no, this is too important. We can't, we got time to, to have problems. Now, as the plaster thickens up, you can take some of the plaster that's down here and drag it up and, and especially like there's a little bit of uh, cheekbone here. I want to make sure I'm getting under that cheekbone and you just drag it up just like that. So I'm actually being a little bit dainty here. Um, and, and so much of monster making is not dainty. Now I've actually, that's my sculpture there. Um, I'm trying not to disrupt the plaster underneath. Again, it's not terrible if you do, but I'm trying to just add thickness, which is essentially strength. Um, now there are professional mold makers that they can get that mold like one inch thick all the way around and it's beautiful and that's all they do for a living. Um, but there is something to be said for having a thicker mold. Number one, like this mold, I'm not going to use hemp. It's a small mold and it's pretty stout and I just don't really need to use it. And it's just another step when you're doing something of size, you don't need to worry about. Um, if you have hemp, use it. But I didn't want to bother with it this time because it's just not necessary. Um, and and the, one of the benefits of a thicker mold is actually um, it it can handle more repetition of pores because it's it, it's of pores of latex because the latex absorbs into the plaster and so if you got a big old mold you don't have to wait for it to dry all the way to the edge um, it's it, it there's plenty of suction power in the porousness of the plaster and so uh, even though you could look at it in some ways and say, well, it's kind of wasteful and gee, it's kind of heavy. Eh, it's kind of nice to have big beefy molds within reason. We've gone over the top. We've had molds that we literally had to have car tires and, and a forklift to move the molds to separate them. When we did the alien from uh, the movie Alien, that, that mold was so big and we, it was one, a two piece mold, the whole thing. And we would fill it up. <coughs> I forget how we even filled it up, but we'd fill that thing up and then seal it. And, and then, then have to get the forklift and chains and pull the molds apart. It was quite an ordeal, but you know, plaster, it's a wonderful thing. You just pay the price sometimes. And there are, lots of different mediums. I mean, not just different plasters. You could make a plastic mold off of this thing. Um, I wouldn't recommend that early on. There's one of the beauties of plaster is it absorbs um, the latex and builds your thickness without having to do layers. Now, if you go to fiberglass, and we do sometimes when we get into big molds, we'll, we'll go to fiberglass. When you go to fiberglass, then you have to build it up with layers and you will have to spray many layers to get the thickness we need. Okay, so this is now troweling uh, density and, and I'm just trying to get it so it's a fairly uniform thickness. I'm sure I've got a couple of inches of uh, plaster all the way around. We've had big old molds sometimes and it's like the tip of the nose, it's eighth inch thick. I mean, you gotta kind of 
pay attention uh, as you're working to make sure that you're you're not uh, ending up with four inch thick areas and eighth inch thick areas. Okay, so I'm gonna let this get a little thicker. The last thing I like to do is to get a flat surface here so that when you flip it over for pouring the latex, it'll sit. And what I need is a stick. Let me see if I can find something. Okay, so I've got a, a flat edge and you wanna take it when it's really nice and thick and work it in. and it does not need to be pretty on the outside. It can be whatever. Um, it's what's on the inside that counts. In life too. I hear butterflies. No, you can't hear butterflies. I hear birds chirping. Um, Another thing I'll mention, I'm playing with this stuff, is smooth it and get it as smooth as you can. You can take tools if you're really like an engineer or something and you like that, that mold to be really crisp and things. But what you don't want to do is come in with water. Now water, if I wet my hands with water as this is dry and I smooth it, man, that mold will look great but you don't want to do that because that kind of seals off the pores so it doesn't breathe as well. And so um, you can scrape it. You can do what I'm doing now with just the plaster, but I wouldn't recommend um, putting, putting water on the mold to make it look pretty. And that comes from Ken Stinnell. And Ken Stinnell was a mold maker. That's all he did for a living. And we hired him numerous times over our history. He's gone now, but he was a great guy. And he taught us a lot of this, this technique. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, he was, he was a tough guy from making molds all those years. In fact, he told me that they would, a train car would come in. And that's back, I don't know if they even make 100 pound bags still, probably. We buy them in 50s just because of, you know, we're wimps. But he would, they would unload a train car by hand, the whole car, uh, him and another guy. Just, it's like, dang, <laughs> we're soft now. But anyway, that's, uh, that's where a lot of this comes from. And a, a lot of it's out there. You can find... Um, mold making videos online and stuff. I just, I try to keep it as simple as possible um, so that it's, it's not overwhelming because when you start something like this, it's, it can be overwhelming. Now, I will say this, for whatever reason, the plaster has given me lots of time to work today. That is not always the case. Sometimes you gotta get on it. So, um, you know, really stay with the mold. Don't like, oh, I think I'll go check messages on my phone and come back in 10 minutes. You could be very sorry. It's, 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 a, it's an organic product and, and sometimes you know, I'm sure sometimes it's the way you mix it or the humidity in the air or what, I don't know all the, the variables, but sometimes you gotta really work fast and sometimes not. Now, if you do all that stuff that I just did, you will have a very good mold. Let me wash my hands, I'll scrape this off. So I didn't find a paint stir stick, but this will work fine, it's just a piece of thick sheet metal. 
but just kind of go like this. I, you know, if I was really sharp, I could, you know, get a level and make sure it was just perfect. But, and then like I say, if you want to clean up these edges a little, you can, but Okay, so that is it. Now, we're gonna let this set for um, maybe, you know, cause it's already hard and it's, and it's starting to heat up, but I would give it maybe half an hour just to make sure that uh, the plaster is, is firm. And then I'm gonna show you how to clean the mold out and pour it with latex. Okay, so the mold is done. And I would wait about a half hour to make sure it's, it'll get real hot and it'll start to cool down. And, um, and uh, so you wanna wait to make sure that mold's really set. And then I'm gonna show you how to clean the clay out and then how to fill it with latex and uh, we'll be right back. All right, so we're ready to remove this guy from the mold. And, um, I just get a mallet or a hammer, flat screwdriver, and try to break the vacuum a little. And get some of this plaster off the side here. Once in a while, you're lucky and the sculpture just falls out. Okay, now don't lift this too high when you're doing that. So there's my armature. And now I like to get a big loop tool, something like this. You wanna be careful not to scratch the surface, so pay attention. And then um, I like to get a chunk of clay and then pull. And that gives you the opportunity to kind of break the the vacuum but um, just you know kind of be aware of where your your sculpture is and um, so you're not doing any damage to it as you go around and clean out the clay and you know you can take it slow because you know it's you don't want to damage the the plaster and have to fix that every time you pour one of these up. Now see right there, that jerking mo motion got, got a chunk to pull out. And because my, my paint was very dry, the mold just looked like it's gonna come out real clean. And I'm also, pulling up a little as I go, just cause, you know, if I was right next to like a, a line that I wasn't aware of, I could break the plaster. So now I can just peel a lot of this out. I've gotten close enough that I can fold the clay and um, get it mostly out. And another tool you can use is something like this, little, little uh, sculpting tool.
the um, you don't have to paint the mold, but I'll tell you, it just makes cleaning it so much easier that uh, it's it's a step that we almost always do. If there's really a super deadline or something, we might skip it, but. Another tool that I don't need too much, but uh, comes in handy, that I seem to have covered up, is a little wire tool like this. And it's got a little rounded area and point, and you can get into some of this fine detail. I don't know if you can see this, but like I'm working the nose, and, and so the rounded part helps keep me from doing damage. And I'm kind of doing that same little flicking motion, I'm trying to break that vacuum, but. Now, that is it. So now you are ready to fill this mold, and this is a good solid mold. If you um, take care of this mold, it'll last forever. I, maybe not forever, but 20, 30 years, you know. And um, now they do wear out when you pour them a lot. And so one of the things you might consider if you're wanting to do an army of zombies is to fill it with, um, latex, lay, let the latex fill all the way around the outside edge. And then when that's dry, um, fill that with some sort of polyurethane, soft polyurethane foam. And then you can make all the molds you want just over and over, forever and ever. And uh, that is all there is to it. We're gonna show you how to make this. Brain. Ah, dude, I'll keep what little brains I've got left. Scram.